Do do dee. It's Nandi. Hello, friends. At popular request, today I've got another data mining video. The main new bit of information in the game files is the Screamer Killer abilities, as well as some bits of code that likely belong to its boss primes. I'll walk you through all of those abilities in this video. If you've been subscribed and following my channel, you'll have noticed that I covered the Tyranid data mines in my last video, namely the Tyrant Guard and the Tyranid Prime. Both of those characters remain in the data mined files with abilities as previously described. I'll let you check that video out if you're interested, but thought it would be worth mentioning that it looks more likely that those two characters will come to the game as previously imagined. The Screamer Killer comes to the game on September 27th for the next Guild Raid season. I'll be covering him in a video where I do my usual deep dive and extensive analysis, so stay tuned to the channel and make sure you're subscribed to be ready when it goes live. The official game announcement has confirmed that the prime bosses for the Screamer Killer are the Nerothrope and the Winged Tyranid Prime. It's a tough boss and the announcement ominously reads, intended to be high level and terrifying. Brute force is not the answer, strategy is. For those of you unfamiliar with data mines, this is information that is hidden away in the game files that people with the right expertise can extract and provide to the rest of us. I don't have any skill in this myself, but I'm simply providing the information to you, the wider public. The main thing to note is that this is all subject to change. Please, please, please take this information with a bit of salt. The first passive ability is Blistering Assault. This looks like a passive ability that means that the boss's attack is a cleave. Looking at the character model, I would assume that this character only does melee attacks, therefore this passive ability is a melee cleave. However, that's purely speculation and theoretically this could also apply to ranged attacks. The next passive ability is Hyper Aggression. It reads that from round 2 onwards, the boss can use an active ability as well as a normal attack. This is different from the last two guild raid bosses we've had, where you could essentially guarantee your characters being safe if you didn't stand in their area of effect active abilities. The last passive ability is called Adrenal Surge. This grants the Screamer Killer additional critical chance every time it defeats an enemy. This means that if you do use multiple weak characters or summons, the Screamer Killer can potentially kill or one-shot multiple characters in later rounds, especially given the other passive that gives him an area of effect attack. The first active ability is called Unparalleled Ferocity. It deals physical damage to a melee target and all adjacent enemies. This has a 100% critical chance against summons. This looks like the Screamer Killer's anti-summon mechanic and is also an anti-clump ability, penalizing you from bringing characters like Kalgar or Darkstrider who rely on being adjacent to allies to give their bonuses. The second active ability is called Death Scream. This looks like a ranged attack that does plasma damage to the primary target and bio damage to the adjacent enemies. This ability also has a chance to stun all of the affected targets. This is another anti-clump attack, and the stun effect is particularly dangerous because it renders the character almost useless. To remind us, stun means that a unit can only move one hex, deal 50% less damage, and cannot use any of its abilities. The final active ability is my favorite one, Living Battering Ram. Here, the Screamer Killer picks up one of your units and throws it two hexes away, dealing physical damage to it and potentially stunning it as well. If the hex that your unit lands on is occupied, then it takes bonus damage and displaces the original occupant. I really can't wait to see this in action and it sounds super super fun. Well done to whoever on the development team came up with this idea. That's all I've got for the main boss, but I also have a couple of other things that I wanted to share about the Tyranid Primes. The first Prime appears to have an ability called Vulnerable to Flame and Blast. Here, whenever the Prime takes Flame or Blast damage, then it takes additional bonus damage. The counterweight to this is that any non-Flame or non-Blast damage deals less. The icon for this ability appears to be the Winged Tyranid Prime, so I would guess that this ability is attached to the Winged Tyranid Prime, but again, that's just pure speculation. This slide essentially shows the same ability, but applying melee damage rather than flame or blast. The icon here shows crackles of psychic energy, and I wonder therefore by process of elimination if this is the ability that applies to the Neurothrope Prime. The final bit to share is a skill called Synaptic Insight. I'm not totally clear on who this applies to, but based on the text, it looks like it provides additional hits against targets that are within Synapse range to another Tyranid. Could this potentially be a summon ability? I can't quite recognize the Tyranid based on the icon picture, but it looks like potentially a mortar attack. 
Anyway, that's all I've got for these bosses. Everything I've included here has come courtesy of the data mines and data miners, and I've included the source code for your perusal and interpretation. Remember again that this is subject to change. Check out my other data mining video for information about other playable Tyranid characters and Ragnar Blackmane. If you found this information useful, please consider entering my referral code on screen. It gets you 100 Blackstone and goes a long way in supporting me in the work that I do. It's single use though, so choose who you support wisely. If you're able to subscribe to me, that's an added bonus because once I get to 5,000 subscribers, I'll be able to generate an in-game code that will reward everyone playing Tacticus with some freebies. Finally, if you're interested in joining a new guild, feel free to reach out to us in Pants of Horus via Discord link in the video description below. That's all for now. Thanks, folks. Bye. Doo -doo -dee. It's Nandi.